Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, September 21st, 2024, second video of the day. But this news was too important not to get out right away. So the Pentagon has declared a state of alert in the Middle East for all overseas bases due to the rising tensions between Israel and Hezbollah. Hezbollah just hit Israel. I'll get you the video. Breaking, Iron Dome is working in ha Haifa. Never can pronounce that. Get you that video. Moi! Wuleu! Wuleu! Faulkner, Faulkner, Faulkner! Yeah, to Faulkner! Yeah! And Faulk, 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 Faulk! Wuleu! What are Uh, Elon Musk, uh, let's just get into some other news. Well, wait, keep going. Hafia under attack. Hezbollah is targeting industrial and military Israeli facilities in the area. With direct hits, massive explosions are heard in reports of rampant Dave, Ram, Ram, Ramat, excuse me, David Air Base has been hit. These are long-range missiles. Lebanon has every right to defend itself. DD Geopolitics power outage reported in Aflua, Israel. Hezbollah's target was the Ramat David Air Base. Despite Israel's killing of drones of Lebanese civilians, Hezbollah continues to focus on military bases rather than directly targeting strikes. All right, so that's uh, that's the breaking news out of the way. Let's have a little bit of fun. Uh, I don't know if you knew, but uh, Robert Barnes is prosecuting a case in uh, Pennsylvania. They're trying to shut down the, um, the, um, um, the Amish from being able to sell their, their food that's not processed uh, and, and destroyed by the, uh, the food uh, processing industry. And uh, so uh, they're, they're doing in this video, I guess this is, it's a protest, but uh, it's really cool because they got the American flag and Trump flags. Uh, so it says, uh, and I'll put this up. The government tried to intimidate the Amish in Pennsylvania by raiding their farms. No one knew their politics until now. I didn't, do the Amish vote? Can somebody tell me that? I don't even know. I mean, I always thought they just kind of try to want to stay away from everything. But, you know, when the world comes in against you, you know, you can only, I mean, you can't be like a Democrat and bury your head in the sand and never, and never do, you know, uh, pay attention to the world around you. Because the world around you is going to come for you sooner or later. You know, so that's why I, I, I watch too much news and everything. I got into this way back at the beginning of the, um, the Cerveza virus, you know, because that, that was when I, the world came after us, right? It was horrible. How many of you were locked in your house for a year? Uh, luckily, I live in Florida, so we, we were only, uh, it was still crazy here for a brief period of time. It took DeSantis a bit to get on top of it. But anyway, let's watch that video of the Amish. Uh, looks like they're protesting. We ain't the same on the game. Hey, Donald Trump is your president. All right, so that was just a, a short video. Uh, I did want to get, now this is, um, we're going to get the next video up right here. Uh, but before I do, let's let's talk about a couple of things that I missed in the last video. Uh, I, I I don't know, you know, sometimes my, my ADD brain here just doesn't work. Um... So I, I forgot to tell you, the Russians, uh, I think they're up to about 1.2 million men in their army. And uh, it, so everybody thinks, so, uh, you know, they're all in fighting in Ukraine. No, that's a very small percentage of the Russian forces. 
And so somebody was pointing out, and I don't remember when it was, but, you know, Russia is a huge country. If you don't know your uh, demographics, I've always known it was big, but I mean, it's, it's, it is huge, <laughs> and especially now that they've annexed some of Ukraine. No wonder the globalists want to uh, take Putin out and, and break up that country and steal its resources. I mean, you know, that's, uh, anyway, they, they're not going to be able to do it. But uh, anyway, so uh, they were pointing out that right now the Chinese and the Russians are conducting joint uh, military uh, exercises in the Pacific uh, Sea. And plus, you know, the, the Russians have to defend that whole Pacific coast. Um, so, so there's, you know, think about how many troops it, depend, it takes to defend an, a nation that big. So really, I mean, they're fighting with one hand or tied behind their back in Ukraine. And, uh, but, and by the way, this, this military exercise, it's a big one. I mean, they're coordinating everything together. They're, they're, they're making sure they can fight together against the, uh, the U.S. fleet if they want to uh, get, uh, get belligerent over there. So I thought that was very interesting indeed. And I forgot to tell you that Russian bomb in the last video, that was called the Tsar B-O-M-B-A, T-S-A-R-B-O-M-B-A, the most powerful bomb ever built. Uh, that was that nuclear bomb that, that the video was all about. So I did want to get that out. And all right, so let's get the next video. Uh, this is a, it's actually a 12 minute long video, but I, this, once again, I'm stressing the importance of free speech. Okay. Now that free speech is banned from TikTok and it's banned from all Western nations and uh, you, you pretty much need a VPN to get to it these days. But I want you to watch this video and this is why it's so important. This war coming about in the Middle East, the regional war, looks like it started to me. I don't know. I could be wrong. It, it's not without provocation. Okay. And so I went ahead and just kept this one whole video. It's 12 minutes long. You can watch it or not. It's from RT. I know a lot of people, oh no, it's Russian television. I'm going to I'm gonna break out in hives, man. I'm going to break out in hives if I watch Russian television. Okay, here's the video. An Israeli strike on a residential building in Lebanon's capital has killed 14 people, wounded 66, according to local officials, who said that some of the casualties were kids. Hezbollah has confirmed the death of its top military commander, Ibrahim Akil, and we have more details now from Beirut with our correspondent. On Friday, Israel carried out a strike targeting Ibrahim Akil, a prominent figure from Hezbollah, a senior member as well. He is a member of the Jihad Council. He's also the head of the operations division. And uh, Hezbollah has essentially come forth and also confirmed the death of this prominent figure within the group. The attack in and of itself is, is of course, a devastating blow, not just to Hezbollah, but to the people of Lebanon, because looking at some of the aftermath, we realize that the entire residential building was demolished and essentially um, reduced to nothing but rubble. But moving forward, of course, from Tuesday up until this point, what we've realized is that there has been a series of attacks across the country and the Israeli uh, administration, for the most part, has been silent, except on Friday when it carried out this strike in the suburbs of Dahia. Now, we understand that the attacks on Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, of course, did take into consideration the detonation of mobile devices, communications devices, pagers, two-way radios. Uh, on Thursday, uh, when Hassan Nasr Allah, the leader of Hezbollah was speaking, Israel uh, and its uh, air force essentially entered Lebanese airspace and they came as far as to Beirut, uh, flying low, essentially ensuring that the people of Lebanon are also on edge. Eyewitnesses explain the developing situation on the ground and describe what they have been going through over the past few days, as well as the past few months since Israel has been escalating its attacks on the Lebanese capital of Beirut, as well as its suburbs in the south of the country. The situation in the country is extremely difficult. Israel spares neither children nor adults and destroys all world interests. I feel sorry for the children who are being bombed by Israel, the enemy that destroyed and expelled us from our lands. People are of course very afraid, everything in the country has come to a halt. I work in a bakery and it is not operating, other businesses and entrepreneurs have also stopped working all because of Israel. It is impossible to work or start businesses because everything is suspended. I was forced to leave Eirun, which is on the border. We came to Beirut and the air alert went off and the bombing started. The criminal Israeli enemy targeted a building with its people and residents. As always, it has no respect for young or old. 
nor for anything in the world. We in the circle of the resistance will remain steadfast. We will remain supportive of the people of Gaza and supportive of Palestine. Over the course of the past few days, I've spoken to locals, professionals, civilians, and the many alike, and they tend to have one thing in common. They all suggest that the people of the country are either fleeing the capital, they're fleeing north, or they're fleeing the country. Looking back at the winter season in tw of, uh, by the end of 2023, the city of Beirut was a lot more crowded. There was a lot more going on, and we, would, we assumed that the scene in the summer would have been even better than that, if, especially if we, t if we look back at the summer of last year. Uh, the city of Beirut was crowded, it was popular. Populated. Uh, tourism was buzzing, but this time around it seems that the city is empty and this is a problem for the locals economically as well. People are expecting war to break out. The last time I was here, it was a question of if, but this time around it's a matter of when and the Israelis are not providing the people of Lebanon with any sense of security. Well, terror poses a threat to regional peace and security. That's the message from the Russian ambassador to the United Nations as he condemned the recent mass attacks when thousands of pages and walkie-talkies exploded across Lebanon. And while Israel is mostly silent, Mossad has been accused of carrying out the clandestine operation. An emergency Security Council session was called at the UN headquarters to discuss this carnage. Those who committed this barbaric crime spared no one. Explosions occurred in hospitals, markets, street shops and pharmacies. It is known that this was a coordinated, remotely controlled operation for which no one formally took responsibility. We regard this incident as a terrorist act that poses a threat to regional peace and security with unpredictable consequences for the entire Middle East. We strongly condemn this unprecedented attack on friendly Lebanon and its citizens, which constitutes a gross violation of its sovereignty and is a serious challenge to international law. For more than two hours, representatives from dozens of countries alongside the UN's Under Secretary General for Peacebuilding Affairs and the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights voiced their deep concerns and fears over the fragile peace in the Middle East, especially following the unprecedented explosions of pagers and other devices in Lebanon earlier this week. Algeria, which requested this emergency meeting labeled the attacks, has potentially amounting to war crimes. Russia, as you have just heard, called it the first ever large-scale terror attack using information technologies that led to fatalities. Other envoys described the blasts as beyond imagination, shocking, outrageous, barbaric, something that deserves strong condemnation. The simultaneous blasts, as you remember, resulted in dozens of deaths, including children, and thousands were injured. And while no group or country has claimed responsibility, yet officially many point fingers at Israel. As China's envoy during today's meeting noted, different parties have reached more or less the same conclusion about who did it. Lebanese foreign minister as well, who participated in this meeting, described the incidents as a terror attack. No one in this world is safe anymore in the aftermath of the electronic attacks which were carried out recently in Lebanon. Those were extraordinary attacks. They have led to the injury of thousands of innocent civilians, including children, women and the elderly. If you do not name the perpetrator, if you do not deter the perpetrator, condemn it and compel it to stop such aggressions, the credibility of this Council of International Law and of Human Rights Laws are at stake. No one can prevent them from using these technologies in the future to target civilian planes, trains and to kill civilians, and indiscriminately terrorize them without discrimination. Well, much has been said about these attacks breaching the rules of war, particularly the principles of proportionality and the distinction between military and civilian targets that all parties should respect in any military conflict worldwide. With communication devices and everyday items turning into weapons, predicting the number of those affected and casualties was impossible. Many have stated that these actions represent a blatant violation of international humanitarian law and also a violation of Lebanon's sovereignty. Let's listen to some other countries, what they had to say. This precedent opened a dangerous Pandora box 
we strongly urge countries with influence over Israel to take tangible steps to stop Israel from going further down the wrong path. We do not believe that all parties in this conflict are operating in good faith. There is one party that has chosen over and over again to take escalatory action at every opportunity. Many countries pointed the finger of blame at Israel again. Officially, no country, no party, no group has claimed responsibility for the Lebanon blasts. Some states, however, were super cautious in commenting on these incidents with little to no condemnation from most Western nations. The U.S. emphasized Israel's right to defend itself, opting not to denounce the pager explosions as a tactic. Instead, they used this opportunity to reiterate that they had no involvement in the attack. It is imperative that even as facts emerge about the latest incidents in which, I reiterate, the United States played no role, all parties refrained from any actions which could plunge the region into a devastating war. This stability was shattered on October 7 and 8 when Israel was attacked without provocation by non-state armed groups in Lebanon. Israel has a right to defend itself against Hezbollah's attacks. And the United States will continue to do everything possible to support de-escalation and an enduring diplomatic solution. Well, the U.S. envoy also called on de-escalation, pointing out that more fighting won't help the 60,000 northern Israelis safely return to their homes. Interesting that this is quite different from what Washington's closest Middle Eastern ally is saying. Israel's defense minister recently made it very clear that they see military action as the only way to bring those evacuees back home safely. During the U.N. Security Council, the Israeli envoy also reiterated again that Israel may have no choice but to go to war. Ironically, while accused of allegedly using terror tactics in defending itself, Israel describes its own fight as a fight against terrorism that the entire world, according to them, should support. This is not just the displacement of individuals, but of entire lives, memories and futures. It has been Nearly a year, a year since they were forced to flee and still they wait for the day when it will be safe to return. Israel will not allow this to continue. Our objective is very clear. We will restore security to our northern border and we will bring our people home. If Hezbollah does not retreat from our border and back to the north of the Litani River, through diplomatic efforts, Israel will be left with no choice but to use any means within our rights to defend our citizens. Given everything said by Israel and its allies, as well as by Lebanon, it seems the chances of the region cooling down anytime soon are rather fading away. All right, so that's just uh, one video on provocation. So I wanted to kick back here and talk about provocation for a minute. So let's let's think about... Oh, I didn't even have the hat on. Let's put the hat on. All right. Let's talk about provocation. Uh, let's uh, go back with the U.S. wars. All right, let, let's see. I'm not sure exactly why the Korean War happened. I, well, it was the, the North Koreans invaded South Korea, but I'm not sure why they did, uh, other than maybe they were trying to unite the country. That's one I have to research. Then you bring us up to the, the Vietnam War. Now, that was a false flag event. The uh, United States pretended that there was an attack on one of our ships in the sea. Now, you got to remember, before we were there, the French were there. And the French were trying to uh, take uh, the resources from Vietnam, much like they did in Africa. And the Vietnamese were going to have no part of it. And the French were down in this valley, and the Vietnamese moved... I mean, by hand, man, those, those Vietnamese, they, they are tough. They are some tough people. And they moved all the artillery up into the mountains, and then they just blew the shit out of the French. And so the French had to withdraw, but then they cried out to the United States and said, Help us, United States, help us! And so then, of course, Kennedy was assassinated. He wasn't going to take us into Vietnam, uh, much like they're trying to do with Trump. I have a feeling they're going to get Trump sooner or later. I, I hate to say that. I mean, but I, I hope not. 
I hope God continues to protect him. I mean, it, but he's got, I mean, the, the Democrats aren't going to give up. They're going to they're going to keep coming after him and, you know, they're going to kill him sooner or later. I mean, you can't. Well, let's hope not. All right. I get I'm sorry. I digress. Uh, but anyway, so Johnson, he slowly built up our troops. Well, and then with that false flag event, we were all in in, in Vietnam. So you see the the provocation, the, the Vietnamese didn't want a war with the United States. We set that whole thing up and went over there and did it. OK, let's bring us up. To, let's just talk about Libya for a minute. Libya didn't want a war with the United States. The reason why we went to war with Gaddafi, I'm convinced, is he was taking his, his currency off of the dollar and he wanted to base it on gold. Well, the globalists weren't going to put up with that. And then, and then what was terrible was that great glee that, uh, that the, the Democrats and the rhinos showed when he was brutally murdered in his country. And I remember Hillary Clinton coming out and go, we went... If we saw and we killed him. <laughs> oh my God! I just wanted to smack her right there on the spot. Uh, what a horrible woman! You know, I mean, he was a world leader. I, I bet she'd do the same thing if Putin died. You know, probably the more horribly the better. I, I bet if she could go over there and torture him herself, she'd do it in a heartbeat. She'd be pulling Putin's teeth, pulling his fingernails out, and laughing the whole damn time. I can tell you that right now. Uh, and, and other, other Democrats would probably do that, too. Uh, so you see that that, that whole thing, uh, there was no provocation for that. He wasn't. In fact, his people loved him. He took most of the money that the, the government made and he invested it into, the, in, into the, the nation. Why do you think Libya had no civil wars under Gaddafi? I mean, I'm not going to say he wasn't a dictator in certain kind of ways. I, of course, from what we know, because all we get is Western propaganda. But from what I hear is people loved him. A lot of them did uh, enough so that there was no, uh, no nobody was going to take him out unless the, the CIA conducted an operation, which is what they did. And then, of course, remember Benghazi when Hillary Clinton, you know, our ambassador died. And she, she, oh well, you know, she never faced consequences for that. That's unbelievable. The, you know, we could have saved those people, and they wouldn't even let the. There was another base nearby. They said, "Man, so let us go in." They eventually just disobeyed orders and went in. All right. So then let's get to the next war. I let, oh, let's get to Iraq. Let's talk about Iraq for a second. Oh, yeah, there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. So we got to go over and kill a million people. Woo! God save the United States. You know, and, and by the way, even if Iraq had WMDs, what threat would that be to the United States? Unless they can get them, lob them across the ocean. Oh, no, well, they might have been able to hit Israel. Oh, boy, well, we wouldn't want that. Of course, Israel had the Iron Dome. So you think that they would have been able to take out the, any Iraqi uh, threat, but oh, maybe not. Maybe, maybe that, that, that must have been why it was. Was that Netanyahu? Who was a president of Israel during that time? So I imagine Israel doing the, did the same thing back then they're doing now and got us into that war or wanted uh, Iraq taken out. Problem was when we take Iraq, took, took Iraq out, then Iran became a threat because then Iran uh, became the kingfish in the Middle East. So then we pitched... Saudi Arabia against Iran for a long period of time. So now we got uh, Netanyahu, who's, who's in charge of the U.S. government, uh, trying to uh, bring us in against Iran in, uh, in Lebanon, which it looks like with Lebanon, if they strike them hard, then the United States, the media, the mainstream media, I'm going to tell you right now, they're all going to come out and say, Oh, my God, Israel's been attacked. It was a completely unprovoked attack against Israel. It's not like they blew up 5,000 people in Lebanon with pagers and walkie-talkies and killed women, men, and children. It's not like they blew up an apartment building and killed people. It's not like they bombed an embassy in, uh, in Syria, which was the Iranian uh, guy. It's not like they killed the Hamas ambassador up in the uh, thing. No, it was a completely unprovoked attack by Hezbollah in the United States has to support Israel, peace out, stay free, if I find something, I'll tack it on to the end here.